Well, happy good morning. It is August 1st, which means last night at midnight. Starts the fat phobic, nope, the plus size readathon. It is currently 7 a.m. I have an all day, all day meeting today. I have to be at work right on time for that instead of my typical 15 minutes fashionably late. Might as well start this vlog because good news, I got a little bit into my first book. And that's actually a lie because I did already read a book so technically this is my second one. I had like a three day gap between when I finished my last book and when this started and I didn't know what to read so I picked up Owen. I guess I was giving myself a little taste of what's to come. But this one is a book by L.M. Drew. It was an ebook. I've read a book by this author before. She also did a werewolf series or like a wolf shifter called like One Night at Gavurosh or something. Did not like it. <laughs> so I was nervous going into this one, but this one is a bear shifter <laughs> romance, which I don't think I'd read before. The whole plot of it is that he's like from this tiny town up in the mountains and this girl comes to live there because she's like, I need to get away from the world. And he's very solitary because apparently bears are solitary but then he goes into town and sees her and needs her so because it's winter they're like shut up in a cabin together sexual kinks ensue um <laughs> compared to the last book i read by her i liked this more i don't know if it's more recent i still maintain that the writing was just okay in this case i do think the smut redeemed it because most of the plot was that so there wasn't like some boring or unrealistic action they were solving in the background i really can't think of anything else to rate it based off of. I just gave it three stars. Like it was fine, it was pretty good. If you're into books with like lumberjack men who are like six five, you might be into it. But also I was kind of grimacing at the cheesiness of it because there's a point where like the only way where they can get around is he pulls her on like a bear led sleigh. <laughs> So you kind of have to swallow the silliness of it a bit, but other than that, ding. Last night I just had a couple of hours and I was like, what am I gonna do? To be frank, I kind of wanted to start the time I got drunk and saved a demon. I know it's on Kindle Unlimited, so I went to go look for it there, but then I got distracted. <laughs> so instead of that, I started Rain Me In by Kayla Gross, which is obviously a cowboy romance. I explained this in my TBR video. I've read one other book by Kayla, which was her like Christmas novella about a girl who meets these guys at the airport and then they just smash because their flight's delayed. And that was like a novella that was just porn. And I, it was fine, like I give it three stars again. I was just in the mood for some hoedown throwdown. Like I haven't read a cowboy romance or a Western in so long. So this one is, this girl is from a small town in Texas, her brother died died five years ago and she feels responsible for it so she moved away. She has to go back to town because her mom gets injured and she has to help out with all the new foals and stuff on the ranch. And while she's in town she sees this guy that her brother used to be best friends with but he's gotten kind of sexy. So it's about her and Gavin and Gavin is like immediately entranced with her and yada 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 but she's like guarding her heart because A she's gonna move away again and B that's her brother's bestie. Like it's bringing up bad memories. I am 41% of the way into this. It's definitely taking me to the country. Very nostalgic for me to just think about like the rodeo scene and like line dancing and ranches and horses. So obviously I'm loving that cause I'm a horse girl. I will say my main issue with it is the writing is very elementary. <laughs> a lot of times when I have issues with the writing style of books, it's because it's so cheesy and I don't like that the main character focuses more on her thoughts and feelings rather than like writing descriptions of things. I just think it's an indication of weak writing. This one isn't like corny or anything. I mean, sometimes, but the way that the writing flows is making me realize how valuable an editor is <laughs> in the publishing game. It's just so awkwardly written at some points and the way that she describes things is so overly basic it'll be like yeah those greenish brownish hills over there and then she does the thing where like all the dialogue feels fake because it's just used to explain things to the reader and it's like your mom wouldn't talk like that one thing that i'm very aware of when i read plus size romances is like how applicable it is to me this book she is described as like having ample thighs and a huge titties on the cover obviously she's like a size i don't know 18 but immediately in the book and i'm not saying i need every fat woman to have the same experience as me but within like two chapters she was like oh yeah i'm back in town and there's the guy i used to hook up with and then he like picks me up and spins me around girl 
I know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, she's in a different fat league than me because this was not happening in my world. Maybe it's because she's in a small town. Part of me is questioning like, how big are you if you can like ride horses still? Because I'm going to admit, that's a big pain point for me being plus size is I really miss riding horses but I'd have to lose like a hundred pounds in order to do that. So I'm just very proud of myself for being able to read a book like this because usually if the writing style is bad I'm like this is not worth my time goodbye. But I'm actually having fun with it. I'm like letting it ruminate just because I like the setting. I have a couple more books by Kayla on my TBR so I might need to read some other books in between them so that I'm not reading all these ones back to back that are just- I feel like these are all gonna be like in the three star territory it feels like such a compromise that to read books that have fat representation, I'm reading a lot of tropes that I don't love. And a lot of times they're like self-published, so they don't have the cleanest writing. And that's been a labor of love to find books on my TBR that fit this. But I don't want to immediately just call this quits on book one. So I'm going to stay hopeful. Maybe we'll get like a four or five star out of it. Even though this is very plot heavy about grief, it's not like a smutty book. And not to be pretentious, but just so you know how deep the southern roots go, when they were in like the town bar in the first scene, the main guy was like, he's the bartender, and he said, I put on a song that gets everyone going wild. And in my head, I was like, boot scootin' boogie. And I turn the page and the main girl walks in. She's like, they're blasting boot scootin' boogie in here. I was like, so good. I'm having a lot of fun putting on my country playlist while I read this. I'm leaning into my southern roots. Even though every character in this book very well could be a Republican. Are you enjoying it? I think you just want breakfast. Okie dokie, so hi. I'm trying to do a little bit more like daily vlogging in these because I feel like lately I've been only showing the parts of me I want to show, which might be good for boundaries, but I don't know. Maybe I make these a little bit more intriguing than that. Shelby has invited me over. She has a new kitten, so I think that'll be fun for me. Uh, I did buy her cat treats at the store while I was there, so I'm bringing those and my candle and you. I'm gonna continue reading my book. I'm gonna be honest, I was listening to country music today and there was a period at work where I was like, kind of excited to go home and read <laughs> after this. I know when I get back into the book itself, I'd be like, mm, it's not as good as I remembered it being, but it's fine. I'm gonna learn how to read things and appreciate the experience of it rather than my brain lingering on everything I don't like about it. Hi y'all! You're gonna get really annoyed with how frequently I'm gonna do my Southern accent at the start of this video, huh? Well, I've been at Shelby's for like two hours and have not read. A goddamn page. Actually, I did, because I realized last night I left off on a kissing scene, which I love when I do that accidentally, because then it's like a treat when I get back to it. So, uh, they're currently making out. I'm 41% of the way through. Oh, when she puts on Lord of the Rings ASMR for you. She want me. Oh, she doesn't want me. Live reaction to my kissing scene. You're happy your butt cheeks out right now. You like it? You want the other half out? <laughs> got home from Shelby's. I read like 5% of my book and then I got to the first sex scene and it's so unbearable I had to stop like in the middle of the sex scene, which I think now is probably why I stopped in the middle of the kissing scene last time. <laughs> I can usually excuse a book for a bad sex scene because at least it's sex, you know, like the whole pizza adage, any pizza is good pizza, same thing with sex. It feels like a crime to read smut that sounds like it's written by like a 13 year old writing fan fiction. So I'm having a really hard time with it, but the book is fine. Otherwise I'm like halfway done almost halfway done. I know I just said I was so excited to keep reading it and I'm sitting here shitting on it. I think I was really in the zone when I started it and now that I have it with fresh eyes I'm like oh. <laughs> anyway I don't think I'm gonna read anymore tonight because it's like 11 o'clock and I have to go to bed. Oh my god it feels so weird to update consistently rather than just when I have a reading update but good morning. It's Friday I have to go to work. I'm making myself a fun water. I'm still deep in my water talk obsession. Cheese stick and apple deployed for brekkie. I'm so tired, I can't wait for this weekend. I present to you, no. noodle. Well, if I look like I just ran a marathon in the rain. I just got home from work. Today was surprisingly an easy day in between campaigns. However, when I got home, I did have to bring 40 pounds of cat litter upstairs, which was not fun. But I realized I did my TBR video for this a couple of weeks ago, so I've actually picked up some additional things since then, and my arm, is covered in cat hair. I really only have four additional books to talk about, but I wanted to uh, pose them up front because by the time this video will be out, you can tell me if I should read them soon or not. I'm literally sweating. This is what it's like to live in Texas. I actually 
purchased a book for this. I found at my library bookstore there's something about Sweetie. Shelby convinced me to get this because it was like a dollar. I actually have not read When Dimple Met Rishi which came out when I was in college and it's about these Indian American high schoolers. Sweetie is the main character who's a athlete and she's fat so this brings in like South Asian body standards because her family is pretty critical on her about that. She and this guy have like a pact or something. They're a cute couple on the back. So uh, one other book from the library, I did not even know this existed but I was just, I, when I tell you I went to the library new book section and pulled out every single one of them and looked at the cover to see if I saw fat. I had never heard of this book, but the thing that sold me was it's called Barely Even Friends. Beauty and the Beast is like one of my favorite songs of all time, like the title song gets me, so loved the title. Also, the little nods to the candlestick and Mrs. Potts is on the cover, it's not focusing, but it's so cute! It's obviously a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And it's said for fans of Julie Murphy, so part of like her plus size identity is a little bit at the forefront of this, so it's not like she's just mid-sized and it's never discussed. But this book follows, um, the female is a contractor and the guy is like this rich snotty dude who needs house stuff done, but he's just had a recent death in the family, so he's like extra asshole. <laughs> That's called grieving, but men are men, so he takes it too far. I think she ends up living at the house that she's helping fix up, and it's like an enemies to lovers thing. It says it's steamy. I literally got this and read page one just to like confirm to myself that it would not be that cringe right off the bat, and so far, it's not that, like, it's good. So this is like high, high, high up on the things that I want to read, even though it's not like an obese main character who I could relate to more. Speaking of which, love at first sight. <laughs> by Olivia Dade. I told you guys I don't like Olivia Dade, so I'm I'm shocked too to see this here. But I did get a couple of comments of people saying, oh, why don't try this one? This one I thought was a boss and employee romance, but it's not, so very misleading cover. Hated that. If I recall correctly, it's neighbors, maybe brother's best friend, rivals to lovers. Just the way this synopsis is written, I know I'm not gonna love the writing style, but we'll see, okay, we'll see. Literally just talking about those and the heat has drained me. I think I have to turn the camera off. I'm struggling right now because I really just wanna lay around and read, but I told myself I'd go for a walk and it's still like 100 degrees outside and I know if I get comfortable, I'm not gonna get back up. Let me get a big hell yeah for all the lazy girls like me. Hell yeah! Can you tell I've been listening to my country playlist? <laughs> hey guys, dinner haul. I'm a little sniffly because Shelby just FaceTimed me and showed me all the rats at Petco and I want a rat so bad. So I did cry a little bit about it. That's really like double homicide for me. I wasn't just a horse girl. I was the girl who had a rat <laughs> and I loved her. I miss having a rat. They're so sweet and smart. Anyway, I made Indonesian chicken with broccoli and brown rice and I got to like 60% into my book. 62%? Hello, Warnet. Welcome back. Um, they're currently making out against a wall, so feel free to pause and read that. I stopped in the middle of the sex scene that I was in the middle of last night. I forgot that I hadn't continued after that. It, it was better. Like, when I gave it a break and came back to it, I was like, okay. Now that every time they see each other, there's some smooching the book is picking up, and it feels like it's going by faster, so. It says I have, like, two hours left of it. Speaking of, uh, being plus size, I have a trip to Europe for work in September and I'm petrified because I had to book an economy ticket. And when I am on airplanes domestically, it is miserable because I don't fit and I'm like sitting there with my arms tucked into my body trying not to exist. And I've had some rough experiences with it. I don't want to recap anything. I've talked about it in videos before, but I've been like, adamant that I have to do something about it, even just to lose like 30 pounds, which I know is an unrealistic goal in two months. And at this point, oh my God, one month, fuck. So I'm feeling a little bit desolate that nothing's gonna change and I'm gonna be miserable, but I'm trying to like eat healthier. I started tracking calories. Hi, welcome to the Fat Phobic Readathon. Uh, I started tracking my calories because I just really wasn't aware that I was overeating as frequently as I do. So that's step one. It's very hard to stick to like 1800 or 2000 calories a day I'm learning. The other half is I really fucking don't want to go for walks. And I was on a really good roll last week, but the weekend hit last week and I did not walk and I have not walked all of this week, which it's crazy to say because now it's Friday and I'm realizing, oh shit, that's literally like a full week where I did nothing. So amazing.
nothing. Zero progress. I've been avoiding talking about it in vlogs because I hate being like, I'm gonna do something about it. <laughs> Weight loss journey and then I do it for three days then I give up. I don't know, I guess since I'm kind of daily vlogging during this readathon and it's a little bit related being about plus size people. Here are my plus size struggles. I don't remember why that all came out, but I get to drown my sorrows in a bowl of food. This is embarrassing because this book is so mid, but I can't stop crying right now. I'm on like 90% and it's finally like resolving the trauma of her brother's death. <laughs> I'm so sad. Which is crazy because this book had so many sex scenes in the past 50 pages and now we're dealing with trauma. I'm reaching extreme emotional capacity. I'm just shocked that this book is so average writing style wise and it's still like making me tear up but I'm over here blubbering over this scene. I just finished it. I'm crying a lot. This is only a small detail, but it's a spoiler. Mute this video for the next 20 seconds if you don't want to know. This book ends by the cowboy finding her childhood horse and buying it for her. I was really not ready for that. That was so sweet. I don't want to do a review looking like this, so let me get reaccommodated somewhere. Okay, well, if I look like I've been crying, I have been, which is a crazy transition to this review because altogether, not the best book. I actually am pretty impressed with the plot of it. I cannot emphasize to you enough though, the writing is so basic. I need you to get an editor. I need you to take a writing class because we have everything else there. She has great characters. She has great plot. The last 20% of this book was crazy. The sex scenes were like she had the vision. And I think that's the whole thing is I'm like, you have the vision, Kayla, you're almost there. But everything was so basic. The way they talked to each other, every single word was so cliche. The way that she described things was always the obvious kill. Nothing about it was unique or interesting. It just felt like you were reading a middle schooler's creative writing assignment, which sucks because the rest of the book was so good. And I'm, this is why I'm so shocked that I'm like crying over it and I thought this book was gonna get like an automatic three stars just because it was fun to read but there's so much work that needs to be done. The ending of this book might have pushed it to a 3.5. <laughs> I'm like do I round this up to a four? I thoroughly enjoyed this to the point where I'm sitting here like should I start the sequel right now? These books are very plot heavy especially like she's dealing with grief in this book obviously i was dealing with her grief the past couple hours so if you want something that's just like smutty this includes smut but there's a lot of other plot around it the one thing that pissed me off though is that this main character's whole character development moment is that after her brother has a horse riding accident and dies she's like i'm never riding horses again and i knew that there was gonna be like some cathartic moment where she does ride the horse and i jokingly told she I was like, if this bitch gets back on the horse after five years, but then doesn't wear a helmet, I'm gonna be so mad. I'll bet you $10 if you want to guess what happened. <sighs> I mean, of course that might just be Texas cowboy culture, but it happened and she was not wearing her helmet. She was just galloping across the field. I was like, oh, so you want to die too? Okay. But yeah, mark me as surprised that this was as good as it was. I definitely would read more from Kayla, even though I was really sad. I thought that this might be like one of her debut books and I'm like, maybe she's improved in her writing since then, but this is like, I think the sequel to this is her most recent book. That being said, the sequel, I believe, is going to be about this main dude's brother named Cade. And Cade was such an interesting character, I think because the main dude in this book, Gavin, almost reads like the quintessential woman writing a man. Like, he didn't necessarily sound or feel like a cowboy other than when she would remind you that he's wearing jeans and a hat. But Cade flipped your expectations upside down because he's like angry and an alcoholic. He was the one who had a lot more emotional baggage and dealt with it in a really outwardly mean way and I get you know what I guess I have a thing for meanies I was not expecting that book to go on my TBR but I'm I'm kind of interested the next one is called rope me in the cover am I gonna cry again I think I'm about to start my period because like everything is making me cry today 
Oh my god, and there's a third one in this series coming out later called Pull Me In. But I have to show you the cover for book two because he's so sexy. There we go. Okay, uh-huh. I'm sexualizing men right now, like it's a hobby. It is about Kate. Okay, so I don't know who Presley is. It says she's like a fiddler from out of town. Here's what you can expect in Rope Me In. Spanking. Rope bondage. Oh, you gotta be jorking my peanut. How come I turned the page and there's a playlist? Hey, is redneck women on here? Cause I'm a redneck woman. Oh my God. Am I reading this next? I can't. I have bad news. I think I'm about to read this. Another one. I don't know why I'm so giddy. Especially cause I just cried my way through that book. What? I'm taking a big hell yeah for all the redneck girls like me. Hell yeah! Okay, if I sing that song one more time in this vlog, I have donned my Eras Tour shirt and I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna go over to Shelby's house and we're gonna do like a 12 hour readathon. I'm gonna bring my Kindle, which has all of my options on it. I only got like 5% into Rope Me In last night, which if I'm being honest, the writing style is already so much stronger. So I have hope for it. If I even finish it, we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna bring three additional options over from my library book collection, but I got a lot of good feedback on Brazen and the Beast, which is one of the only historical fiction romances that I have. So I think that this could be a fun time. I usually can fly through those. I also wanna try the Do's and Donuts of Love because this is the only like sapphic one I think that I have at least physically and it's YA so the font will be big and that'll hopefully be pretty easy to read and my third option I want to read is this one I'd never heard of until this readathon Savvy Sheldon feels good as hell it's like this main character and her dude who's a contractor we'll see which one I read first but I'm gonna put these on my tote bag with my candle I'm bringing my two water bottles one for my fun drink and one for ice cold water and I will see you at Shelby's hello we've started our 12 hour readathon I don't even know if I introduced that we were gonna do that hopefully I did and I just have a bad memory uh, it's 12.50. Holy shit, it's already been an hour. I'm sitting here cuddling with Tootie. One thing I want to um, mention now. What? Tootie's human is also here. But we're not cuddling. Theo and I are cuddling more than you and Theo are cuddling. <laughs> I want to mention this now before I forget because it's like a tiny detail. But one of the things in the series is that the women are both like five years older than the guys. Which is fine. I don't think we're in cougar territory. Oh. But I'm also like, why is a 28 year old interested in a 22 year old? I'm going to be 28 next year. I cannot imagine walking onto a college campus and being like, do I want to date any of these seniors here? 22 year olds are still in college, right? Or like 21? Yeah, just so. We were talking about this a little bit because I was like, women are already more mature than men. So why would you want to go even more immature? Like he may not have voted yet. And you know who he would vote for if he did? <laughs> it's not as fun to do a time lapse of me reading because now that I'm on Kindle, it's just going to be me sitting. Where'd Tootie go? Here, I'll give you some okay. time lapse. Oh. Oh, I thought you meant you'd give me your feet to cuddle. <laughs> um, I know everyone is curious what I'm uh, reading. I'm currently listening to the audiobook of Rowley Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Spooky Stories. So, is that also <laughs> Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yeah, it was a spinoff series. <laughs> there will not be any sucking or fucking in my book, I can assure you. Of that. Oh, that's crazy. Not in mine either. <laughs> Guten Morgen. I'm gonna say that even though it's 2.45 p.m. I turned off the page numbers on my book so I wouldn't focus on it. And don't look at the fact that I highlighted the first time he called her a good girl. That's for me to know. Page 168. I got pretty far. I'm 43%. Again, it feels like today's been going by so fast because I've been like... But Mother Shelby has made us some chicken fried rice from Trader Joe's. Five out of five stars. I don't even need to take a bite to know that because it's so good. We're taking a break so we can go watch Queso and be iPad kids while we eat. Yup. But I love my book. It's so fun. Okay, the one thing that's going to be interesting is the guy is like very depressed, borderline suicidal depressed. And the main girl is anxiety attacks every day, been abused her whole life, no one cares about her kind of vibes. I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be a match made in heaven. I'm sure you two are just gonna fix each other. She's a city girl who like isn't doesn't know anything about horses. That's also an interesting dynamic of her coming to live with him because I kind of can't tell you the situation because it will spoil book one. And that's the thing. one thing that does suck about this is I think this is so much better so far but you have to read book one to get anything out of this so I wish I could recommend it as a standalone but it really is like more of a sequel long story short it's like a forced proximity thing I really liked him in book one because like I said he's mean and I like that he was unexpected but in this one because he's the main character he talks a lot more 
corny and expected, even though he still does have his outbursts. We'll see how all the drama in these gets solved. But based on the last book, I know there's gonna be tea and drama in the last half of this book. So I'm almost there, but it also is getting pretty good. Still no smooching, but I'll be brave. I started a new book. Oh yeah, reading update. Lavash, I believe, at first sight by Taylor Muscuti. Pay no mind to the per pop stick that I'm using as a bookmark. I liked her first book, Sorry Bro. I gave it like four or four and a half stars. It was kind of weird because she commented on, or she like shared my review on social media. And I was, like, <laughs> well. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, like, <laughs> she want me. It was like positive. Like, she was like, oh my God, thank you so much for the such kind, like, such kind review and stuff. But I was like, you're like, I didn't tag you. I was like, how did you, <laughs> like, you're creeping. Clearly, it's a queer book. And her last book was also a queer book, Sapphic, following Armenian characters. If you haven't read any books with Armenian culture in them, I recommend the last one for sure. This one, she's starting off in a corporate environment and I'm like, me, 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 me. Hi. There's really no reason for me to be updating right now, by the way, it's been like half an hour. I'm on page 250%, just got through our first sexual scene. This felt important to update because praise kink girls, read book one and then read this book. Holy shit. That was so unexpected. When I thought spanking, I was like, oh, it's gonna be like light BDSM, but nope. Thank you. <laughs> In my book, they just exchanged phone numbers. They're gonna be fucking, I hope. I think she writes Fade to Black. I have three hours left in my book. I'm gonna be sat for all three of them. We got B-roll of Tootie's Rolls. It's 5.30. I'm 70% of the way through my book. It's bonka bonka hours. I finished my book. It is. You finished it? Yeah. Fuck. You've been on your phone for two hours and you're wondering <laughs> why I finished my book? I have a lot of thoughts, but I don't know how much of it matters. It was good. I do think it was a lot better than book one. I'm happy that I read it and continued on, especially because it was a lot more interesting sex life wise between these two characters there was only one sex scene there was like a heavy petting scene and then a sex scene and then like one in the epilogue for a 400 page book i'm gonna need a little more juice but it was good i did have a fear that because this book was a lot more focused on this main character named Presley, who by the end of this book, because I've been reading it for so long, I kept reading her name as Parsley. She was actually like pretty insecure about her body because of an abusive ex. And so this one, she's actually very self-conscious. And so he constantly has to talk to her and be like, you're fucking perfect, baby. You're so beautiful. Look at you in the mirror. You're gorgeous. A little bit overdone at some points. I was like, okay. I was scared that it was going to veer too far into, I see myself as pretty because he thinks I'm pretty. And on the flip side, I didn't want him to be like, my depression is cured because she's talking to me about my depression, which ended up in a good place. The family had a lot of talks about all their drama. He went to therapy, take notes, men. Girl, ain't no men watching your chat. <laughs> okay, so it is 7.30. I thought I would finish that at like 5.30. So clearly we've been distracted and giggly today. I know at this point I'm not gonna finish one of these, but I'm gonna start one. I wanna do a change of pace and I'm gonna read <laughs> The Do's and Donuts of Love by Abita Jagradar. From sprinkler splashes to fireplace ashes, I gave my... Oh no, it's not gonna focus. Ruined my song. Blood, sweet, and tears for this. I just had to move my books so Tootie could have his spot on the couch back. On your throne. Homosexual. Homosexual. Minute to page 100. We have on our rainstorm ASMR. It's 10, 15-ish. This book is super cute. We got a Bangladeshi Irish main character. So it's set in Ireland. It's the junior Irish Bake Off show that she's a part of. And the girls on the cover are obviously our main character, her ex-girlfriend that they just broke up like a month ago. And then this new girl who's her new friend that she's a little bit crushing on. This book is so easy to read. And I always get nervous when I read YA now because it's so easy to be overly corny. But actually the writing style for this is very nice and I'm enjoying it to the point where I'm like, shit, maybe I should read this author's other book. I know The Henna Wars is very popular. After reading this, I would be interested in checking that out. But this is going by fast. I think I'm gonna read a couple more hundred pages by the end of the night. We'll see. Any updates, Shelby? They're still not fucking on the page. 
I'm gonna be sucking and fucking with icebreaker as soon as I'm done. I've been told that on page 100 and something. 12. 112. Not that I'm counting. We get to some butt luck action, so I'll be manifesting that. As Taylor Swift once said, it is midnight and I just finished my chapter. So I have 244 pages into my baking book. I have like 80 pages left, but I have been holding back a nap for the past 12 hours. I'm so tired. I think this is going to have to be a task for tomorrow. But the book is continuing to be really cute. And I appreciate that the main character does a lot of mean thing not a lot but she makes mean comments every now and then and blames people for things and just is very quick to judge obviously she shouldn't be doing it so i like that the author is including it and not just making her like this perfect main character i just can't wait for this to actually resolve that and for all of her friends to call her out and be like and you sucked for doing that so typically i feel like I would criticize books that have unlikable main characters, but it's just a little sprinkling of unlikableness. And the rest of the time, like she's very talented. There's a Indian woman on the judging panel of the TV show. So she has like someone to look up to. And that woman is honestly like mentoring her for a lot of the reactions to her being on the show are people like tweeting and things being racist and fatphobic about her being you know, a young baker. A lot of good conversations about that. I also think it's funny that they have a character that's basically framed off of Gordon Ramsay and you can totally tell. It's like even the same initials in his name are like GR. It's just really cute. And I was not expecting a YA book to be as good as it is. So my expectations are definitely met and exceeded even though I'm not even done with it yet. My camera's about to die, but any updates from you? Finished my book, started a new one. I'm going home, I'm tired. I tried to sleep in today, but my body said I can give you 9 a.m. That's the best I can do. Uh, I did make some sausage, learned how to play Humble and Kind for Tim McGraw and ukulele. That's gonna make me emotional if I think about that. But I'm gonna finish the Do's and Donuts of Love and then I think I have to wrap this vlog because it's so long. Last night I stopped at page 250. This book has 320 pages, so I'll be done before the hour. I'm gonna have my breakfast and finish this off. All right, as anticipated, this book was so easy to read. Final review, this book is so cute. It really cuts out all the crap, and so you only have these like short bursts of very interesting scenes. There's zero cheesiness in this, despite it being YA. I like that the love triangle has all this tension, and the main character did finally come to the realization that she did some things wrong, so she had a really good reckoning with all of her friends, and how she was being toxic. So I just thought it was really well done and it wasn't predictable f as far as like being a competition show. If you're into the Great British Break Off, I would definitely recommend this. I'm so happy I picked it up and I'd never heard of it before. So this was definitely a winner and the author's note at the end made me emotional. <laughs> I definitely want to read more by her too because that was incredible. Now for my next read, I kind of want to go back to something that's like brain candy and just stupid and fun. So I think I'm gonna pick a book on Kindle Unlimited. I'm thinking I wanna do the book about the Kraken. I think it's called Washed Up. It's like a 150 page book and I'm kind of expecting it to be ridiculous, but I love the cover. Okay, apologies, my camera died, but. So this is the book I was talking about. Ooh, it's only gonna take me like two and a half hours to read, hell yeah. This is the cover. It's, I can't, I hate books with tentacles and I feel like this is gonna be in that alley, but I just love like, hi belly, hi thighs. I love this cover, so I wanna give this a shot. We'll see if it's absolutely unbearable. Hello? I'll see you in two hours. <laughs> okay, update, I finished it. I, as predicted, it was very quick to read, but it wasn't that good. <laughs> this book definitely was so overly rushed. The whole plot of it is that this main character, Quinn, works as a chef on a cruise ship and she accidentally goes overboard, which triggers this kraken to go and save her. The kraken is non-binary. They rescue Quinn and then bring her to an island where she recuperates and then they realize, oh shit, you're my mate. <laughs> I mean, I was expecting this to be so unrealistic and stupid like immediately Quinn is like doesn't freak out that she was captured by basically Squidward hey if you've ever sexualized Squidward you'd be into this like I said I'm not a big fan of tentacles and this was basically all that that was so if this wasn't a plus size main character I probably would have never picked it up everything was so rushed even the sex scenes were like two paragraphs so it's like you read the whole book and yeah it went by fast but there's not a lot of payoff 
for that. I didn't think the writing was unbearable, which I was kind of expecting. The writing was just fine. I would definitely read from this author again. Hopefully she just writes longer books because there's a lot more explanation that I think needed to happen. I'm gonna give it like three stars. So I'll let you go. I'm gonna keep reading today, but I'll update my next vlog. We'll start it on today, Sunday. So I hope you've enjoyed the first reads of the Plus Size Readathon. I know I have. I will never rest until I can add every plus size book to my TBR. So let me know what else you recommend and thank you so much for watching. Bye.